Greetings, my brethren. It's so good to be with you on this day. I trust that you're doing well. I trust you've had a little time with the Lord. If not, you'll take a little time and just talk to him today. But I want to thank you for listening to these devotions and allowing them to talk to you. And I trust that you will be encouraged from these devotions. He was wounded for transgressions, the writer said. He was numbered among transgressors. We did esteem him forsaken by his God. As our sacrifice, he died, that the law be satisfied. And all our sins, and all our sins, and all our sins were laid on him. I want to thank God for forgiving me of my sin and forgiving you. Now, why did he wept? over Jerusalem. That's where we stopped last morning. We're looking at the triumphant entry and we looked at Luke's gospel in chapter 19. There we noticed that Jesus wept over Jerusalem, verse 41. When he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it. Now come with me in your mind. And I don't know if you can go back some years ago. I'm sure you can. In my mind, I can listen to the crowd in America as the first black president of America made his way to the platform as he campaigned. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And after his first four years, as he made his way up to the platform again, you would hear four more years, four more years. In my mind, I could see as he looked at them smiling and saying as he took the stage, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. But the crowd continued to shout, four more years, four more years. Four more years. Yes, we can. Yes, and they kept on going on and shouting. But notice, Jesus did not allow what they were saying to distract him from what he came to do. Notice his response. Obama's response would have been the response that I would have given. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. But Jesus' response was different. What was his response? When he heard the crowd, he began to cry. He wept. And when he was come nigh, he beheld a city and he wept over it. Just when the Pharisees asked him to quiet them down, he wept over the city. In my mind, the pain and sorrow that Jesus bore for Jerusalem, not the land, but for the people, caused him to weep. He felt such pain in Luke 13 and verse 34. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen that gather her broads under her wings, and ye would not come. You could only imagine the feeling of our Lord as he cried unto to Jerusalem and said, I've been gathering you, and you would not come. When he said that time, oh, he did not weep. But in John 11, verse number 32, down to verse number 35, again, Jesus wept. The Bible said that when Mary was come, where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell at his feet and said unto him, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. And when Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in his spirit, and he was troubled, and said, Where have ye laid him? And they said unto him, Lord, come see. Look at verse 35, Jesus wept. Matthew 23, 
verse 37 to 39. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them, which said unto thee, How often would I gather thy children together, even as a hen gather her chicken under her wings, and ye would not behold your houses left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. May I tell you, in his public ministry, over and over, he's always touched by the feeling of our informant. Not only the people then, but us now. What a savior. Jesus never wept for himself. He even told his followers, don't weep for me. Sometimes things bother us and we feel we are so down, we want to cry. Jesus told his followers, don't weep for me. You would believe that all that he was going through, that he would want people to feel for him. No. In Luke, Gospel chapter 23 from verse 28. And Jesus turned unto them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming in the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren and the worms that never bear and the paps which never give suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills cover us. For if they do these things in the green land, what shall be done in the dry? You never read in the Bible how he laughed, but you read in the Bible how he cried. He wept when many around him were rejoicing. Did he wept because he wondered what would happen or who would betray him? No. Nah. He knew who will betray him. He knew that they would spit in his face. He knew that he would be condemned to be crucified. He knew all of that, but he never wept over that. He gave the reason for his weeping. In chapter 19, verse number 45 to 48 of the book of Luke. Why did he? Chapter 19, verse 45 to 48. And he went into the temple, and he began to cast them that sold therein, and them that bought, saying unto them, It is written, My house is a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And he taught daily in the temple. But the chief priests and the scribes and the priests of the people sought to destroy him, and could not find what they might do, for all the people were very attentive unto him. Wow. As I study this, I can see God's love for all of us. In studying this, you go to 42 to 44, you would see the prediction. Jerusalem would be attacked and utterly destroyed by her enemies. This prophecy took place in AD 70. The Romans built such a siege wall around Jerusalem when the city was attacked by Titus. I wish to remind you that Jesus Christ triumphantly rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, placed on his shoulder, and will be paid for in full. And that salvation would be available to all at no cost to us. He paid the price. Salvation is available. It's free just to be received without any cost to man. All man needs to do is to receive the free gift of salvation. I thank God that he did not turn back. He went all the way for us. May God bless you as you join in and share in these devotions with others. Our Father, Lord, we are so thankful now that we know what our Savior did for us, what it cost him, God, we are so much more appreciative. Thank you. Thank you for dying for our sins. Thank you for going through it all. Thank you, even though you're all powerful, you allow these things to happen so that we can be free. Lord, save the lost. I know that's what you want to do. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. 
cause. Bless, guide, direct. Oh, meet the needs of your people, especially those who need you, the spiritual needs. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Be back next day.